Okay, I think the camera's on. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, my video is going to be my top 10 novels of all time. So let's get right to it. We'll put our sponsor prop right there. And we're off to the races now. And a lot of you have known that um, as I do my book reviews, I'll hold up a book and say, hey, this is in my top five of all time. Well, I've done that in so many book reviews. I'm like, I can't possibly have 30 to 40 books in my top five of all time. So I thought to myself, I better narrow this down to an actual top 10 list so I can really figure out which books are in my top 10. But then as I did that, I got topped, I got 10. I, I pulled out all these books that I thought would fit in my top 10 and I realized, I still have, I've got more than 10. It's more than 10. And I'm like, I tried to fit them into 10 and I'm like, but this one is important. And this one, like number 11 is important. 12, 13, I'm like, and so then I was like, okay, got a top 12 now. We've got a top 12. I'm like, well, that won't do because what about this book is so great. And so then I narrowed it down to top 15. So we're going to be doing a top 15. Top 15. You know, We've got the set set up. We've got the poster. My production team designed this poster um, for the thumbnail. I crumpled it up, threw it in the trash. And then I thought, well, well, let's hang that again on the set. Let's hang it up again on the set. So we dug it out of the trash, hung it up again, just in case, you know, halfway through the video, you're like, what, what's this bullshit that I'm still watching? And you'll be like, oh, yeah, it's Durfee's top 10 novels. So it's right there. So you just so you don't lose track of where you are in life. Let's get down to our top 10 Slash 15, and coming in, coming in at number 17. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't leave this one out of the top 10. So coming in at number 17, War and Peace. That's right, War and Peace by Leo, Leo Tolstoy. Already out of the gate, some of you are rolling your eyes going, oh, Durfee's going pretentious with the literary classics right out of the gate. This whole video is going to be nothing but crappy literary classics just so Durfee can look important and smart a little bit yeah that's probably what's going to happen no it's not um I love War and Peace just simply because it's a great historical novel with a lot of adventure and war and drama and a lot of great insights into just human nature it is one of the greatest novels of all time and I gotta tell you it falls in my top 10 at number 17 which makes a lot of sense. And just so you don't think these are all going to be literary garbage classics. My 16th and my top 10 coming in at 16th is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Yeah, man, this, this thing is great. One of my favorite science fiction novels of all time. One of the novels I have wished I had written myself. Every word is just gold. It's just a great coming of age tale. Great battle school great science fiction, just so many themes in such a short amount of space. And I mean, the economy of words to tell such an epic story. Ender's Game, man, love it. And don't you also appreciate my production team putting together these little numbers so I don't forget, because I'm not good at math or numbers, and I don't want to forget where I'm at. So that comes in at number, what is number 15, the great Pulitzer Prize winning World War II novel, The Kane Mutiny by Herman Woke. This is the classic, classic Pulitzer Prize winning World War II novel about a military commander on a battleship that is just the worst military commander on the planet. And having worked, I've never been in the military, but I worked in law enforcement and I've had some people that were in leadership positions that you're like, so I related to this, when somebody in a top position is leading you down the road to failure, I know what that feels like. And this novel does a brilliant job in a World War II setting of, of just showing you how leadership is important. And when it's done wrong, how horribly it can go. What's my number 14th ranked book in my top 10 James Michener's Alaska. Oh, these are great adventure novels. I'm going to be reviewing some James Michener books. 
soon. And um, my favorite is Alaska. You know, I mean, I grew up in Fairbanks, Alaska before my family moved to Sevier County, Utah. And, um, well, just so you know, I mean, just just dawned on me, you know. I went from ra being raised in Fairbanks, Alaska, where the weather is like 60 degrees below zero all the time, moving to Sevier County, Utah in the desert, where the weather is like 110 degrees hot all the time. Well, you know, but I have a special place in my heart for this Epic adventure novel set in Alaska, simply called Alaska. If you want to learn about the history of Alaska, this is a great place to start. My number 14th favorite novel of all time, Alaska by James Michener. Yeah. Oh, this next one, one the, coming in at number 13 in my top 10, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Y'all know that Donna Tartt is my literary crush. I love everything she writes. And if you want to see my recent review of the goldfinch on my channel, a little tutorial, folks. All you need to do to find the video is, in the, in the, in the search bar on YouTube, just type in the goldfinch. Then type in my name, Brian Lee Durfee. By God, the review it will appear on your screen like a miracle. If that's the way the internet works. You know, I'm not, probably not going to provide a link to any of my reviews of any of these because I don't provide links to every damn thing I say on this channel. But you can search it yourself. You can search it yourself. And I love The Goldfinch because, oh my gosh, it is about just American youth and the pretentiousness of American youth, especially as it relates to high-class New York City and then sort of just bonkers Las Vegas um, because we got a youth, he, he steals, a, there's a terrorist attack. I, I won't get into too much of the plot, because like I said, you can search it yourself. I know you can. The plot is, a terrorist attack in the museum kills his mother. He steals the goldfinch, the little boy steals the goldfinch painting out of the museum during the terrorist attack that kills his mother. And then, you know, things happen. It's a great, great book. Great big book. And Donna Tartt is one of our great literary fiction writers. Number 12, we're getting close to the top 10. Number 12, Shogun by James Clavell. Oh, this, this is a man out of time. This is one of those, I know I, com I compare this to an alien, like a, you send a guy on a rocket ship to an alien planet and he lands on the alien planet and everything is just so foreign and odd to him. That's what happens in Shogun. We've got a 16th century sailor who's shipwrecked on J the coast of Japan. And he's, he's, he's trying to figure out the Japanese culture and people. And they are, they come across as aliens from another planet. Just in everything that they do is so different from everything that this man has. And it is just, it's like... It's like he's been plopped down on another planet and he's got to try to figure it out. And if you want to learn a lot about what happens in 16th century Japan, Shogun by James Clavell. I've read this five or six times. I love it. Not only that, but I've watched the miniseries with Richard Chamberlain a few times and it's great. This is a great historical look at ancient Japan and all the strange customs that they have that would seem just bonkers to every, anybody that stumbled onto it. Oh, yeah. To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee. I mean, this lady only wrote one book in her life, and man, was it a classic. Was it great. About racial strife, about being falsely accused just because of your race. As this book gets banned by a lot of schools because, you know, I, you know how people are when they ban stuff. They're just idiots. Let's ban the book. It might warp the minds of our children. No, this is a great book on how it is to treat everybody fairly, regardless of their race, ethnicity, sexual preference, or any of that. You look at them, you, they, people are innocent until proven guilty. You cannot, you cannot just assume they're guilty because of the color of their skin, or their beliefs, or their sexual preferences. This book is a great classic novel on teaching us all how to be better people. Harper Lee, To Kill a Mockingbird. 
Okay, now we're to a real top 10. Now we're to the top 10. And then we're going to start the top 10 off in grand high fashion with Terry Brooks, The Sword of Shannara. Yeah, I admit. I threw this one into my top 10 purely based on the fact that this was the first novel I ever read, the first novel I bought with my own money. You can see my review of The Sword of Shannara on my channel. Like Again, like I said, just type in Sword of Shannara, Brian Lee Durfee. The review will come up. You can see how much this book means to me because it was the very first book that I ever read that got me jazzed about reading. Not only jazzed about reading, but jazzed about writing and also jazzed about artwork because I loved that Hildebrandt, the Brothers Hildebrandt painting. So this book has a special place in my heart just because it was the first book that got me into reading. Changed my life. A book that changed my life it deserves the top 10. Oh, book number nine. Book number nine. Book number nine. Isn't that a gorgeous book? Doesn't that just look beautiful? I mean, I often review the covers. In fact, I always review the covers of every book because I like graphic design and I like illustration. And so I'll review the covers of every book that I review. And I got to say, this might be my favorite of all of them. That's just beautiful packaging. Dune, number nine. I don't think I need to say anything more. It's one of the greatest science fiction books of all time, if not the greatest. In fact, it is the greatest. I think in my top 30 science fiction novels of all time. You can go watch that video and you'll see where this one ranks there, man. It, it's, it's freaking great. I love Dune by Frank Herbert. Number eight in my top ten. We haven't had a lot of mysteries or thrillers yet. But I will tell you, Dennis Lehane's Mystic River is the greatest mystery novel ever written, in my opinion. Not only that, but Dennis Lehane is probably the greatest mystery writer, in my opinion. If you want to see my review of Mystic River, again, I've already given you the instructions on how to do that. Type in my name and Mystic River in the search bar of YouTube. By God, that video will come right up. I love this. I love this book. Boston Noir at its best. This next novelist takes a lot of criticism. But I'm going to tell you, I've written a lot of fantasy. I've written epic fantasy, big, fat, epic fantasy. I know how hard it is to write big, epic fantasy. And I don't think there's anybody that does it better than this man right here. George R. R. Martin, my seventh favorite novel of all time, A Storm of Swords, book number three in The Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. I think this is a masterpiece and a master class in fantasy writing. George R. R. Martin takes a lot of criticism just because, you know, he got so famous, so now everybody can criticize him, and it's hip to criticize Game of Thrones now. But man, just from a writing standpoint, this guy is a genuine master at medieval history and fan epic fantasy writing and world building. There's a reason these things sold a ton of copies even before the HBO series. And that's because this guy knows what he's doing. This guy can tell a story. This guy can build a fantasy world. This guy can grip you with just a gripping, gripping, fast-paced, epic story. I love me some Game of Thrones. Book number seven. My top seven. That was what, okay. That was my seventh favorite novel in my top ten. What's my sixth favorite novel? Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth. Oh my gosh. I had never, when I started down and first read this, and I've read this probably ten times in my life. When I first read this, I had no idea how grim and bleak and stark medieval life in the 11th century was. But when you read Pillars of the Earth about this village that's just simply trying to build a cathedral in the middle of famine and plague and warring knights just swirling all around them and just everything bad happening and nobody having any money. I mean, it's just not a fun place. The Middle Ages were not fun. We got it easy, people. We got it easy. When you think about the way it was back in the day, 
when you had to just hack hack out a living out of the wilderness and just you never knew when the next Viking tribe was going to roll up over the mountains and kill everything and take everything of yours. This this novel gives you an idea of what it was like to live back in those days. Not only is it a great history lesson on that kind of thing, but it's also just a gripping good story. It's a great adventure novel. It's just fantastic. One of the perfect novels and one of the biggest selling novels of all time. I am not alone in my praise of Pillars of the Earth. Now let's jump to a modern day classic. My top five. This is actually this is actually my legit top five now. The next five books are actually my legit top five. I know in all of my book reviews I've mentioned a lot of books probably are in my top five. But obviously 50 books can't fit in the top five. Well, I've narrowed it down to uh, these are the top five. Robert McCammon's Boy's Life, a modern day classic. This is full of just 1950s and 60s nostalgia. It's a story of a boy, it was a boy's life, a boy who's trying to solve a mystery. It's got a little bit of a ghost story to it, some Nazis, some mobsters. It's just a great look at youth and being young and the magic of just the magical moments of youth and your Little League baseball team and, and all the jokes and fun that you have. I mean, it's a lot like the Sandlot, the movie, just with a ghost story and some mobsters mixed in. Just a delightful book. This is the one book that I've recommended to people that everybody, every single person I've recommended to this book to has loved it. And I can't say that about all the other books on my list, but this one everybody universally loves. My fourth favorite novel of all time, To Green Angel Tower by Tad Williams. His Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series in the, early, the late 80s, early 90s, it was the hottest, most anticipated book series at, of the time. I mean, I read book one, Dragon Bone Chair. I waited breathlessly for book two, The Stone of Farewell. And then I anticipated book three to Green Angel Tower so much. I mean, this was like, this was like, you know, back when Harry, you know how Harry Potter just had so many people lined up to buy the newest Harry Potter book. That's the way to Green Angel Tower was. Everybody, everybody on the planet at the time was just waiting for this book waiting for this book and man was it worth it just an epic huge finale to his trilogy and look at that great michael whalen painting a great michael whalen painting that wraps around to the other side just everything about this book was golden on fire super dope everything about it i loved it i gobbled this 1200 page book size of war and peace i gobbled this up in a few days when it came out my most, I just anticipated this book's release more so than any book in history. And I still remember the day I walked into Walden Books in the mall, back when there were Walden Books and B. Dalton in the shopping malls, and they're not back the way anymore. And seeing that on the shelf and going, it's out, it's out, it's out, I love it. To Green Angel Tower, book three in memory, sorrow and thorn, my fourth favorite novel of all time. What? Pray Tell would be my third favorite novel. Well, it's sitting over here. And it would be Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I know it's a trilogy combined, but I consider, I've consider i always considered it just one great big novel. I don't even think I need to say much more about it. If you don't know about Lord of the Rings by now, if you're watching this video and you don't know about Lord of the Rings... By God, I can't help you. There is no doctor out there that can save you. That's my number third. My number two favorite novel of all time. And oh my gosh, I emulate everything about this guy's writing style. I love it. If I could write like anyone on the planet, it would be this guy. And that is Larry McMurtry, Lonesome Dove. Just the same as Pillars of the Earth, where everything in Middle Ages was bleak and grim. Everything in the Old West, just 150, 160 years ago, things in America were awful. You did not, I mean, us pampered 
modern Americans. We would not have survived five minutes in the Old West, especially after you read Lonesome Dove and you realize just how dangerous of a place the Old West really was, how lawless. How there were no laws. It was just you just did what you did and bandits and, and thieves just did what they did. And you just had to take the law into your own hands if you wanted to survive. And Lonesome Dove is just a simple tale about some cowboys and Texas rangers that want to herd their cattle up from the bottom of Texas up to the top, up to Canada. And that's, that's the story. It's a grand quest. It is one of the best quest novels you will see with these cowboys because they, they run across horse thieves, they run across Mexican bandits, they run across Apache Indians, and everybody is out to kill everybody else in the Old West. And it is just super, super interesting. You will learn so much about the Old West, and it is a, one of the greatest adventure novels ever written, and it is the best Western novel ever written, and it won the Pulitzer Prize. So I'm not alone in my um, belief that this is just a fantastic book. What is my favorite novel of all time? Uh, some of you probably already guessed, because I probably mentioned it before on my channel, but that would be my main man, Stephen King, and The Stand. Oh, yeah, I don't need to say no, nothing else. I mean, The Stand is sick. Sick. Literally. I mean, literally. It is sick. People die. 99% of the planet dies. That's, that's how sick this is. It's a sick book, and it is great. Oh, my gosh. Another grand quest where 99% of the planet is wiped out by a strange virus. Hey, man, I've been wearing a mask for a year. This is, I'm filming this in 2020 during the corona. I can't say it. I can't even say the name of the virus. Other YouTube will take the video off. YouTube deletes videos where you say the name of, you know, it's Captain Trips. The, we'll just call it Captain Trips because that's what it's called in the, uh, the stand. The virus is called Captain Trips. And I'm telling you, man, I know what it's like. We all know what it's like to live through a mild version of Captain Trips where, you know, people are dying and we got to wear masks everywhere and be careful and social distance and there's no rock concerts or football games and everything's shut down. I mean, yeah, we know what it's like. In the stand, man, everybody dies. Everybody dies. Nobody's spared except for a few people and they go on a grand quest to Las Vegas. And you know what? I don't need to even explain it. Everybody's familiar with the story. Stephen King is the greatest writer of all time and a stand is the greatest book of all time. Now, if you did not like my top 10, that's fine. I mean, everybody, you know, you believe it or not. Let me let you on a little secret, folks. You can actually create your own top 10. This, there's nothing set in stone. This, my top 10 is not going to the Library of Congress and, and being, you know, nationalized as the official top 10. No, it's not. You can actually disagree with mine and create your own. I'm just saying, I mean, this is a little life hack, a little life hack for all of you who were lost and thinking, oh my God, this is, this is actually the real top 10 novels? I'm, I, I, this is it? This is official? Not just in my head. You can do what you want with it. You can type in the comments below that you hate everything about my top 10. I won't care. Because you can do your own top 10. And it would be awesome to see it. Because I would like to, maybe I would, maybe there's books in your top 10 that I've not read yet. And I would be like inspired to read. It. Because that's the whole point of my channel. Is to get people jazzed about reading. Jazzed about reading. And if there's some books on here that you've seen that you've not heard of that you haven't read yet, maybe you'll read it and maybe it will become one of your top tens down the road or maybe you'll hate it and you'll be like, Durfee, what, what the hell was he talking about? That doesn't belong in anyone's top ten. But that's the great thing about literature, art, and everything else is it's subjective. People can like what they like. They can dislike what they dislike. And we can argue about it until we're blue in the face. That is my top ten list, folks. I hope you enjoyed We'll see you next time.